How many of you want to be successful in life? Good. Well, I'm glad you came then because for the next 29 minutes, that's what we're going to be talking about. Here's the first ingredient it's going to take for you to be successful out there in the world. And I don't care whether you're in engineering or computer science or the ministry or coaching or whatever field, these principles have to be there. Absolutely have to be there. Principle number one, you've got to have a dream. Didn't get pilot training on the first try, didn't get to test pilot school on the first try, and didn't get to be an astronaut on the first try. But persistence paid off. And you know, my goal to be an astronaut, it's really hard to set your goals that far out. What you really need to do is set an intermediate goal that's going to get you there and work toward that one. And then when you achieve that goal, then set your next goal and move on. Being a leader's hard. It is often unpopular. Heard a phrase one time and it went something like this, no progress is ever made without first one being in an unpopular position. Think about that. We, we, we kind of love status quo in our lives, right? I mean, we truly do. Change is difficult. How much do the companies internationally value reaching out to the community, reaching out to the other people? It's, it's a, 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 a very important part of, of what we do. Both, I would say, both from a social point of view and from a business point of view. I think marrying the two. Success is if you can marry both of these things from a corporate uh, perspective. Our speaker is Ray Lugo. He's the director of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration's John H. Glenn Research Center in Cleveland. He's responsible for planning, organizing, directing the activities required in accomplishing the missions assigned to the Glenn Center. But you know, I'd have to say this, as I was fortunate to be here uh, in, uh, at uh, UCF, and at the time I was here, it was actually called Florida Technological University. And I was uh, part of uh, President Milliken's problem trying to get all the students on board with uh, the name change. So I spent a little bit of time in his office and, and, and uh, I would say it was an interesting time, but I actually ended up getting two diplomas instead of just one, so. You're gonna be an entrepreneur. Everyone knows that it takes money to, to start designing whatever it is you wanna make. Where do you get the money? How do you know who you can ask for or trust? Over time, you'll build up enough experience and knowledge where many more people will trust you than they would initially with their money, right? Venture capitalists, you know, their, their job is to take a risk on people. But they're smart, right? They don't take a risk on anybody. Satisfying moment when you're the least satisfying moment you're the least? Yeah, I would say um, my most satisfying moment is always seeing something, somebody do something never, they never thought they, were, they could do. I mean, as a manager or a leader, what motivates me is working with people to do the impossible. At times I had a manager um, that was dying of leukemia. I was down in Boca. And uh, he asked me uh, for permission to have his laptop in the hospital. I said, why would you do that? You know, you worry about other things. And he said, no, I, I don't want my team to think I quit on them. <laughs> So anyways, you know, these things in our careers, um, to me, the, the good and the bad, it gets down to people, you know, or, yeah. Uh, what would you classify as the most important qualities of a good leader? I, I think I would say know what you want at a, at a certain conceptual level and then articulate it very clearly and consistently and um, and repeatedly, and, and continue to align everything you say and everything you do to, the, to that kind of orientation so that eventually people really get that you're serious about X and that you're serious about the implementation of it all the way down through the organization or to sales and to me business development becomes more about relationships so I mean it is important as an engineer or you know the social side of things is important um, one thing that I think helped make us very successful is that I was selling products and services that I understood so I was very confident and so and I truly believe in that I think I think knowing going to a customer and telling them about their you know how you can help their needs if you truly understand it goes a long way You 
I am rewarded by what I get to do because my personal passions have to do with energy, science, and education. And I get to do all of those in the context of my job. So I've got the NREL thing. I get to do the energy piece. That's great. Uh, I work on the National Science Board, which is a science-focused uh, effort for the country, uh, something that I'm, that I'm particularly uh, uh, excited by. And then there's, a, there's, a, there's, the, there's the component of Great Minds in STEM, which is I'm on the board of directors for this, for this not-for-profit that's about increasing the, the participation of, of, of scientists and engineers in the, in the marketplace, and specifically those that are in the underserved communities. And, and that one I'm, I'm particularly excited by. It, we actually have a conference every, every year, and, and the last uh, couple of years we've had it here in, in Orlando, and, and, next, and this year we'll have it in Orlando as well. And so I encourage you as part of, uh, part of a, the local community to, 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 to seek that out. Uh, go, go to greatmindsinstem.org, and I think uh, it'll, it'll offer you a lot of, a lot of uh, specifics. And it really is an area where I think uh, you can see other professionals and get some, see some role models, engage with industry. They've got a career fair. It's kind of an exciting thing. It happens in, in, in October, and, uh, and, and uh, there's an award ceremony that goes with that. I encourage you to look that up. Uh, you know, I, I'm trained as an experimentalist, and, and one of the things that I learned about, exper about doing experiments is that you kind of have to do it once to figure out how to do it. Uh, well, it's great to be at uh, University of Central Florida on uh, Senior Design Day. It's, uh, these are uh, uh, exceptionally uh, interesting events, and, and for the most part, I think they are uh, necessary parts of the uh, evolution and the, and the training of the next uh, level of, of uh, workforce. I'm, I'm happy that uh, I get a chance to uh, interact with students and get a chance to, to, to meet some of the, some of the faculty and, and get an opportunity to, uh, to see what uh, is going on here at the University of Central Florida. Uh, so I think some of the skills that we are looking for uh, for I think the next generation of worker in the, in the uh, energy arena is a very broad discipline uh, sort of uh, uh, expertise. The real key, I think, to, to solving the challenges and the problems that the country has, certainly in energy, is, uh, is really innovation.